Hello everyone, I have to show you something, look at this. Isn't that crazy? I have to see that. So I'm gonna do some research, I'm gonna look it up if it's possible to go there, if it's still active, and then I'm gonna take you with me. Let's do this. I soon found out that the volcano is actually located on a very remote island, very far from where I live, on the other side of the world actually, somewhere between New Caledonia and Fiji. It is located in the archipelago of Vanuatu off of the coast of Australia. I soon discovered that the cheapest way to get there is to fly from Paris and transfer four times. So I hopped on a four hour train ride to the French capital from where the first flight departed. And when I got to Paris I took the subway to the airport to board the first flight and this was a very comfy flight because I had two empty seats next to me so three full seats to have a nice sleep. I transferred in Beijing and I took a flight to Australia which was another 11 hours. In Sydney I transferred again and I took a flight to Brisbane and in Brisbane I transferred again to fly to Vanuatu. Then it was time for the last and the shortest flight of my trip and the stewardess actually knew me and introduced me to the pilot. Tom, Leslie, nice to meet you. This last flight went by very fast, not only because it was actually the shortest flight of the trip but also because the views were so impressive. Landing at the island where the volcano is, is like flying into a scene straight out of a movie. Lush green forests, white sand beaches and turquoise blue ocean water is everywhere. After picking up my bag, I met my driver Thomas, who drove me to the other side of the island, four hours across the jungle. He offered me to stay in this beautiful little hut instead of the tent that I had with me. That first night was a little overwhelming. I was exhausted by the long trip and I was too nervous to fall asleep. The loud and fascinating sounds of the jungle kept me company for that first night. The next morning I got up with the sun and I packed all my camera gear into my bag along with two liters of water and chocolate of course. I have about one kilometer left to walk to the volcano and I don't know if you can hear it but I can hear it rumbling already. It's like a really deep and, and scary sound like a thunderstorm almost. So I can only imagine how it's going to be up there. The volcano soon rose above the canopy which was a very impressive sight but I still had to find a way up and I actually had to walk around the volcano to find it. Okay guys, look at this landscape, <laughs> I feel like I'm on another planet. So that's where I'm heading, all the way up, and I'm gonna try to go up there on the slope, it looks quite even. The sand will probably be very deep and loose and go into my shoes, but hey, no pain, no game, right? And that's what I did, I went up, it was quite easy actually, because the ground was stable. Almost there. I'm really, really scared. We're gonna look over the edge. Oh my god. Wow. Whoa. Oh, whoa, it's so big. Wow, look at that. Whoa. 
Whoa, look at that! Whoa! Oh, I can see the lava flying. Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, this is crazy. What am I doing? Oh, wow. Oh my god, you guys, look at this. This is crazy. Look at that! Wow! I quickly discovered that it's actually possible to walk around the entire rim of the volcano. This takes about one hour, but I do have to say that it's not always a clever thing to do. Because the wind, being unpredictable, will sometimes blow gas and mostly ash all over your face, no mercy. I hope this video kind of uh, allows you to see how impressive this place is. But of course there's a few things that I cannot capture on camera and that are really part of the experience. So I'm going to try to describe you what the whole experience is like. For example, there's also all the smells. Most of the time you don't smell anything because the places where I'm mostly walked on the other side here, there's a lot of wind coming in. Uh, from the ocean and blowing all the gas and the ash that way so I don't smell much there but when you walk up there for example um, there's all the gas and it doesn't really have a smell but you can feel it in your lungs it kind of stings and it's it's like a pressure on your lungs and after a while you can also taste it on the back of your tongue and this is actually quite dangerous stuff if you stay too long in this kind of gas and you breathe too much of it, um, it can make you unconscious. And then there's also the, the sulfur smell. Uh, some of you might know this smell, it's like rotten eggs and you can, you can smell this at a lot of volcanically active places. Um, a lot of people complain about this smell, but honestly I quite like it, I don't, I don't mind it at all. And then there's also the shock waves when the eruptions blow out of the crater. Sometimes you can visually see the shock waves going out of the crater. You can see it in the in the gas and the ash. But you can also feel it inside of your lungs. It's like when you're at a concert and you're front row in front of the speakers. Sometimes the sound is so loud that it makes the, the air in your lungs vibrate and you can physically feel it inside of you and that's the same here. I'm also just noticing all these really cool pieces of, of lava laying around me. If you have a close look, it's almost like like wood, like splintered wood. So basically when the lava blows out, it, it, it's liquid, it's torn apart, and it makes these really cool shapes by drying in the air while it piles down. Look at this one! This one is awesome! Sometimes, if you're lucky and if the conditions are right, you can see the vents down in the crater out of which all the materials are blown and this can really be an amazing sight.
As the sun sets over this magnificent island and the moon rises above the volcano, the lava inside the crater illuminates the skies and the clouds above with the world's most beautiful and most spectacular fireworks. I ended up staying two weeks on the island and I went up the volcano every single day to really enjoy the moment and learn about the volcano, how it works and also to capture some really cool stuff on video. Alright you guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of it and where I should be heading next. Do you know a place that I should check out? Let me know down below. Also, if you want to see my previous adventure, you can click on the video right here or on the link down in the description below. And if you want to follow my future trips, then you should subscribe, click on the red button, and then I will see you for my next videos. Bye bye! Wow!